Sometimes in multiple object tracking, it is necessary to compute object estimates using the posterior densities that we have. For example, when we want to visualize the multiple object tracking results, plotting the full posterior densities might make the visualization very cluttered and difficult to understand. But if we instead visualize just estimates, then the visualization can be easier to understand. Another example of when estimates are needed is for performance evaluation. In other words, a comparison to the ground truth. Given a posterior density, we can extract an estimate which we denote x hat with a subscript index k given tau. So we have the estimate at time k given measurements up to and including time tau. Two common estimators in multiple object tracking is the expected value or mean estimate and the maximum a posteriori or map estimate. For the case that the posterior density is a Gaussian density, then we have that the mean estimate and the map estimate are the same. So given that we have computed an estimate, it's also important that we can assess the quality of the estimate. In other words, we need to evaluate the performance of the multiple object tracking algorithm. So we can illustrate this with an example. Let's consider an autonomous vehicle. It has some sensor with some field of view, and inside this field of view, there's a car where the true state is denoted by this cross sign. Now, let's say that we have two different estimates marked by these plus signs. Performance evaluation is about considering the question, how good are the estimates? Which ones are better? If we have multiple objects, which of course is the typical case in multiple object tracking, then we need to ask ourselves, how good are the estimates that we have for these multiple objects? And uh, to evaluate the performance of multiple object tracking, we need to be able to evaluate the performance of a single estimate. So it's important to evaluate the performance of an estimate. And a common performance measure is the mean squared error, MSE, which is defined as the expected value of the difference between the estimate and the true state transposed times the difference between the estimate and the true states. And this is equivalent to taking the trace of the expected value of the difference between the estimate and the true state times the difference between the estimate and the true state transposed. And to understand why these two equations are equal, you need to remember that both the estimate and the true states are column vectors. Given a performance measure, we can find the estimate that gives us the minimal error. So for example, the minimum MSE, or MMSE estimator. This is given by the argument that minimizes the MSE. We're going to come back to performance evaluation later in the course, when we discuss performance evaluation for multiple objects. Okay, that concludes the review of Bayesian filtering. Thank you for watching. Now, please try the exercises that follow this presentation.